All right, I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, Esmeralda is going to go ahead and continue to allow people in from our lobby. So thank you, everyone, for being here and for joining. All right, so hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Culture, History, and Languages Career Information Session. I'm Christina Sennemeyer from Santa Monica College's Career Services Center, and in this session, I will discuss with you <clears throat> our art history, history, and philosophy programs. In the event uh, that you would like to obtain any information from this session after today, I will go ahead and put a link to this at the end of the chat, at the end of our presentation, so that you can refer back to it and take a closer look at what we will show you today. I will begin by providing a quick overview of the programs and then we'll go ahead and get into the part where I know you're most interested in and that's really the Q&A session with our faculty. Please note questions should be asked using the chat feature. Please feel free to type in your questions throughout the presentation to Esmeralda Martinez, a career counselor and our co-host today. Since there are three different departments here, please list the department before the question. This will go ahead and allow us to um, keep track really of who wants to know what from each department. We'll try and pass on as many questions to our presenters today. And if we can't uh, get to your specific question, we highly encourage you to make an appointment with one of our counselors to get these things answered. You'll also hear me refer to, um, to our career counselors throughout this presentation. Career counselors work with students to explore majors, careers, and search out career building and networking resources. The Career Center contact information is included on this slide for your reference. With us today, we have our incredible faculty representing each area who you'll meet very soon, and they'll also be um, invited to um, go ahead and let us know a little bit about them, so introducing yourselves uh, towards the end of this presentation. We'll begin with our art history program and the careers it can prepare you for. We offer an associate in art history degree for transfer. Many colleges and universities offer baccalaureate degrees in this field. Students planning to transfer to a four-year college or university should complete the lower division major requirements and the general education pattern for this specific transfer institution. For more information on the program, assistance creating your educational plan or exploring transfer preparation, visit the SMC Counseling Center. Art history is a study of a visual culture, and we live in a visual age. Being able to quickly analyze images, think critically, and converse about them are essential skills no matter what career you pursue. The skills you will gain pursuing this degree will start you on the path for various careers, such as an art history professor, archivist curator, art director, museum conservator, art appraiser, marketing advertising manager, or anthropologist. You will notice we have included on this slide the typical educational attainment people in those careers have, as well as the average salary these careers pay in the state of California. However, this is just a sample of what you can do with this education. One way the arts department prepares students for their careers is through the Digital Humanities Program. Recently, the program was awarded a large grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities to map hidden histories of Santa Monica. SMC students who were working on this project in their art history courses discovered that Jesse Jackson, in his run for president of the United States, spoke at SMC and declared the area marked by David Hertz's sculpture as a free speech area. Art history alumni have gone on to do many things, including social work, working for nonprofits, and graduate school in art history. Our distinguished alums have gone on to study at institutions such as USC, UCLA, and UC Berkeley, just name a few. We support our students in gaining valuable work experience through our internship program. The art history program maintains a close relationship with many art institutions and individuals to tailor internship experiences. 
Students are encouraged to visit the art department or career services to help find an internship and receive instructions on how to get class credit for that internship. Every year, we also partner with several institutions to help our students secure paid summer internships in the art field. We have outlined a few of our partners here. <laughs> The SMC Art Department has had continuous success in placing our art history students in prestigious fellowship programs, including the LACMA Mellon Curatorial Fellowship and the Mellon UCLA Conservation Fellowship Program. We recommend that our students check out our art club to meet other students who are either enrolled in their program or have common interests so that they may network with one another. Information on how to get involved is included on this slide. Please note that clubs are student run, so the activity level may vary from semester to semester. Feel free to visit our website for the most up-to-date club information. For more information on the art history program, please visit the department website. Next is our history program and the careers it will prepare you for. We offer an associate in arts degree for history for transfer. Many colleges and universities offer baccalaureate degrees in this field. Students planning to transfer to a four-year college or university should complete the lower division major requirements and the general education pattern for this specific transfer institution. For information on the program, assistance creating your educational plan or exploring transfer preparation, visit the SMC Counseling Center. History emphasizes interpretation of different, often conflicting viewpoints. Thus, it teaches important soft job skills, such as critical thinking, complex problem solving, creativity, judgment, and decision making. The skills you will gain pursuing a degree in history will start you on the path for various careers, such as a journalist, documentary filmmaker, professor, market research analyst, social worker, lawyer, or a high school teacher. You will notice we have included on this slide the typical educational attainment people in these careers have, as well as the average salary these careers pay in the state of California. However, these careers are just a sample of what you can do with these degrees. For additional ideas, we encourage you to make an appointment with the career counselor at SMC. One way our history department gets our students excited about their careers is through the Warner History Essay Contest which supports the research, exploration, and writing of any historical topic. Prizes range from $1,000 to $500 for awardees and an invitation to the scholarship award ceremony in the spring. Every semester, the history department implements elements of fun with their historical scavenger hunt offered as a part of students' US history classes. Collaboration, knowledge, leadership, and communication are skills fostered in this activity. Now we move on to internships in the field. The Dr. Alfred T. Quinn Collection Project is an internship in the Digital Archive Collection for Santa Monica College students. The internship is a wonderful collaboration project between different departments on campus and off campus. The Oral History Internship Program is an opportunity for students to explore personal accounts of historical events and properly document them for future generations with the goal to break barriers and build bridges between communities. If you are looking to gain experience and want to connect your knowledge of history and the role of government and public policy, you may want to look into the Dale Ride Internship Program here at SMC. This eight-week internship takes place during the summer in Washington, D.C. It is a unique opportunity to learn what it takes to make an impact in our nation's capital. No other community college in the country offers this type of program. SMC's Global Citizenship Symposium is an event that helps connect student and faculty work across disciplinary boundaries and inside and outside the classroom by offering a tangible set of issues that illustrate the more abstract ideas of globalism and citizenship. 
In addition, our social justice lecture series are free presentations and discussions that explore the concept of social justice and a variety of aspects, issues, and developments affecting and shaping it in today's world. For more information on the history program, please visit the department web pages listed on this slide. Finally, we will be exploring our philosophy program and the careers it can prepare you for. We offer many philosophy courses that prepare you for transfer. Many colleges and universities offer bachelor's degrees in this field. Students planning to transfer to a four-year college or university should complete the lower division major requirements and the general education pattern for this specific transfer institution. SMC has relationships with many UC and CSU campuses, as well as many private and out-of-state institutions. <clears throat> For information on the program, assistance creating your educational plan, or exploring transfer preparation, please visit the SMC Counseling Center. <clears throat> The skills you will gain studying philosophy will start you on the path for various careers, such as a lawyer, politician, clergy or religious director, bioethicist, journalist, policy analyst, or professor. Philosophy also emphasizes logical thinking, which is essential for careers in other disciplines, including computer programming, law, or logistics. You will notice we have included on this slide the typical educational attainment people in these careers have, as well as the average salary these careers pay in the state of California. However, these careers are just a sample of what you can do with these degrees. For additional ideas, we encourage you to make an appointment with a career counselor at SMC. One moment, please. All right, one notable highlight at SMC is the Public Policy Institute, which the philosophy faculty take an active role in. This institute serves as a powerful force for engaging you, the student, as well as the community in dialogue on some of the most pressing public policy issues of the day. Throughout the year, our Public Policy Institute invites students to attend speaking engagements like the Fall Forum and the Spring Symposium. Both are week-long events focusing on current public policy issues. We also recommend students look into our clubs on campus um, to meet other students, specifically the philosophy club in this instance, who are currently enrolled in their program or have common interests so that they may network with one another. Information on how to get involved is included on the slide. Once again, please note that student clubs are student run, so the activity level can vary from semester to semester. Feel free to visit our website for the most up-to-date information. If you wanna begin exploring the major, some helpful philosophy classes um, that you can take include philosophy one, two, and or seven. For more information on the philosophy program, please visit the department web pages listed on this slide. Just a quick reminder, don't forget to check out our other presentations throughout the day that are following this one. More information can be found on Brazen and our SMC website. Now I'll go ahead and have our panelists quickly introduce themselves, beginning with art history, followed by history, and then philosophy. And Esmeralda will begin asking your questions to the faculty. Hi, my name is Walter Meyer. I'm a professor of art history and I am the chair of the art department. Hello, my name is uh, Sang Chi. I am a professor in US history and uh, I am currently the chair of the history department. Hi everyone, I'm George. I'm an adjunct history professor at SMC. I work with uh, the wonderful Sang um, and I'm a US historian and world historian as well. Hi everyone, I'm um, Rebecca Simon. I'm an adjunct at SMC and I teach Western civilization um, both one and two. And Amber? I think Paul's trying to talk, but his uh, mic is muted. 
Sorry, I think I'm good now. Uh, yeah, so my name is Paul Clumpy. I teach philosophy um, at SMC. I teach courses in ethics, applied ethics, and logic. Uh, and I'm also the faculty advisor for the philosophy club. Hi, I'm Amber Catherine. I teach philosophy and Paul is taking the lead today. So I'm just here to observe unless you have any questions. So we're going to give you all some time to reflect on some questions that you would like to ask uh, the faculty and just wanted to remind you that you can actually type them over to me and then I will begin asking the faculty your questions. So no right or wrong question, feel free to ask. There is one question, it's specific to Mr. Quinn, and the question is, is your research project still taking place this semester? And then some, um, somebody wants to know, can you please explain the difference between art history, history, besides the component of art? Who would like to answer that question? Maybe we can both answer it. We'll, we'll rip off each other. You know, I think it's um, the, uh, what's the primary source document? So as an art historian, I take a visual object and that's the first thing I'm looking at. And then I'm looking at history, I'm looking at philosophy. I mean, every it's very interdisciplinary, art history, um, you know, when dating an object, we might be looking using science and carbon-14 dating. We might be using archaeology. Where was this found in archaeological record? Um, we look at uh, the social context. Uh, economics plays a factor. Um, what was, you know, the, um, how the economic system might have influenced the artistic production. And so it really, the art object becomes like a nexus from which then to discuss all these other um, relationships with larger cultural phenomenon. So certainly history and art history have a close connection because one of the first places we go is historical documents. So we might pull a baptismal record for when somebody was born and when they died. We might find, you know, something in, in the historical record regarding publications and whatnot, but it's used to inform the art object. And I think a history program would look at the art object as evidence of something then for the problems they're looking at in terms of like documenting the, uh, the, the different, um, um, epochs and different moments in history. So it's kind of like, which, uh, what do you privilege? Is the art object one piece of evidence for, you, a nar for this narrative or does the art object become understanding that visual object, looking at all the potential sources to then um, find meaning and, and importance and, and relevance for the visual. And we privilege visual thinking, like how, do, how we live in a visual culture. So if you want to understand how how visual language and visual things happen, that's where art history sort of privileges those conversations. But there is a lot of overlap. Uh, I would have to agree uh, with uh, Walter that there, <clears throat> there is quite a bit of overlap. Um, you're looking at, you know, culture, you're looking at politics, you're looking at, uh, you know, economic change. Um, you're looking at issues of race, gender, right? All sorts of things. And I think, uh, you know, it is the thing that is really different is that, um, you know, with art history, you are looking at the actual art and seeing how all those factors impact the actual production. And I think in history, we're interested in sort of these, how do all these sources, including art, tell us something about, uh, you know, what has happened, uh, what kinds of economic changes have happened, how did our culture change in what ways? And so, um, in many ways, it's a, it's a matter of focus, right? Um, and where, where you're focusing uh, your sort of analysis in. But they're, they're very complementary to each other. Um, and I believe, I'm sorry, Esmeralda, I was, I, did someone have a question about Quinn? I thought you were asking, yeah, it was a little, a little. I wasn't <laughs> sure, I apologize for that. <laughs> the, the, the question I'm was, sorry. is it the research project? 
Yeah, the, the Quinn research project, uh, we're kind of on a hiatus right now. Um, we're trying to figure out how we can restart that. Um, the original project was really taking students at SMC and having them train at the UCLA Bunch Library, which is the African American History Library at UCLA, under the, uh, the archivist there. And it was really about archiving the actual collection, which is now available on Calisphere, which is a digital, right, digital collections of all of the, the California libraries. Um, so all of that information is up there and, and we're now phasing into, you know, what, what are we, what are we going to have students do with that information now, now that it's digitized. Um, there's been a, a change in our partner over at the Bunch Library. The, the archivist that we worked with has moved on to another job. So we're trying to figure out how to get that up and running. Unfortunately, it is not available right now and, and would probably be very difficult with how things are going right now with COVID. Um, but we hope to have it up soon. Thank you. In addition One thing I'd like to... Was there another question? Oh. No, go ahead. If you'd like to add something, go ahead. You know, I think um, in, in this bucket, right, one of the things that we emphasize, I mean, I'll just say that I emphasize whenever I'm talking to a student is there's a reason to get a higher education. And that reason really is developing your mind, your intellect, um, and, and your sense of self in the world. And those skills transfer to every single job you could possibly want. And so one of the things is like, I know these are really focused on like, what's my career and what like that was like the slides, but to really think about college as this opportunity to take a lot of classes and a lot of disciplines and whatever you think you love doing, that's what you should major in because that degree is the ultimate goal. If you're going to a Cal State or UC, really you're going to get that degree. If you're gonna go do a profession, most likely you're gonna do a graduate degree or you're gonna enter into the job force. And sometimes people think, oh, what are you gonna do with a history degree or a philosophy degree or a history degree? And it's like, well, actually anything. You will do anything you set your mind to. And so um, we really represent those disciplines that I think um, there isn't like a specific job afterwards, but actually they're amazing disciplines, no matter which you pick, to develop your mind or intellect to be successful in whatever you choose to do. And I just wanna sort of take some of the pressure off, you know, like of having to pick and then decide this is the job path I'm on and rather think of it as, I'm in a, I'm on a path of getting a great education and this will be, I don't know about history or philosophy, but I know that our history is not impacted at the UC. And so it's, in a, if you're looking to go to UC and not be in this pool of a huge group and you enjoy doing art, if you don't like art history, don't be an art history major. But if you enjoy it, you know, that's a great way to get into the UC system because they are looking for art history majors to fill those upper division classes. So uh, and, and that might be the case for philosophy and history as well. They're a little bit less impacted than the English, the social, you know, the, the econ and the, and the, you know, psychology and poli sci. And those, those majors are, everyone's trying to do at UC. And so we also represent like an opportunity um, to make your transfer goals. Thank you so much. I do want to get to the other three questions. Uh, thank you for adding that in. And of course, you're always welcome to ask the career counselors a little bit more about um, what he's referring to. So one of the questions here is if there is still a peer mentorship program for history available? Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, the, the, the brutal truth is that we've had cuts and, uh, and so in the budget, and this was one of the things that uh, we were unable to sustain. Um, it was something that we were you know, really trying to, to save, um, but uh, it just wasn't possible. Um, our department does though, and, and I forgot to, to, to mention this in our, and give, give Chris, Christina the information, <laughs> it's probably more like it, but we do have uh, what are called uh, uh, skills workshops every semester, and we are putting those on um, this semester uh, virtually. Is it okay if I share my screen real quick? Is that... Is that all right? Go ahead and request accessing. You should have it already, Try. Okay. Right. So if you are taking a history class, then your faculty member, your instructor will share this with you. Uh, this is a, just a, a rough sort of flyer of what we're doing. Uh, we do these every semester. Uh, there's four of them. 
Uh, there's one on prepping for success. There's one on taking notes. Uh, there's one on reading analytically. Uh, and then there's one on writing essays. Uh, these will be live Zoomed sessions and then they'll be recorded and, and students who can't make uh, these times will have access to the recordings. Um, you will have to register um, and, and that's really just for us to, for housekeeping purposes. Um, but yeah, that, that's something that we will continue to do. Unfortunately, uh, the peer mentorship is, is at least temporarily not going to be available. And then saying if they wanted to access this um, afterwards, is this mm -hmm. something that they would contact somebody or is this posted they will, on? They, we, we are sending these out to all our instructors. Uh, so all our instructors, so every single history class will, you know, the instructor will post this up on Canvas. Um, if any of the students here don't, if their instructor doesn't let you know about this then ask them about it, but that shouldn't, that shouldn't happen. <laughs> so, uh, but these are going out uh, to all the instructors um, in the next day or two, we have to tweak a couple of warning things, but this is basically what, what we're going to have. Um, so the recorded sessions will become available about 24 to 48 hours afterwards. We have to allow the transcription uh, on Zoom to finish out so, so everyone can, can read and follow the transcription. Um, and then those links will be sent out by instructors uh, to each of their classes, so yeah. Thank you so much for that. In follow-up to the question about the um, museum internship, for art history specifically, a student just wants to know if you could say what is one or two typical takeaways that students have expressed? Okay. Um, well, the general internship program is, is amazing because that's just getting people into institutions to kind of see what are the different roles in different institutes, whether it's a gallery, a, a museum, sometimes students work with artists or archivists. So there's a lot in just the internship, but the big ones are the LACMA Curatorial Fellowship. Uh, and so what that is, it actually behind the scenes and if um, you actually work at LACMA, get paid to work at LACMA and you are working with all their senior staff. So you really get access to people who are uh, not only just professionals, but people who are influencers in the discipline of curation and um, museums. And then in the, in the same thing with the conservation fellowship. Uh, and every year we've had an SMC student be uh, awarded one of those for like the past five years since it was created. So it's amazing. And then the, the um, conservation is actually what is a conservator and learn about the science, the engineering and all the things. So you actually work both with UCLA and the Getty. It's the Mellon, the Mellon Foundation is funding both of these, but, um, and uh, they are for diversity. So this is for generally not, if you're not a white male or female, that means diversity for museums because the museum and our history discipline is filled with that. So those, I will put that caveat in that those specific internships are um, to promote um, underrepresented populations in uh, the fields of conservation and curating museums. That answer. Thank you so much. Yes, great answer. Thank you. The next question is for philosophy. Uh, do you know yet if there will be virtual PPI event this year? Uh, I don't know the full details for the PPI event. Uh, for the fall, we will definitely have events, which uh, the one that I'm most excited about is actually not going to be virtual. It's going to be a drive-through uh, movie showing at the Bundy parking lot campus. So it's not virtual. Uh, it's people actually getting together, but because it's a drive-through situation, it's still going to be uh, in conformity with uh, the rules of social distancing. Uh, and in the spring, the hope, and the, uh, of course this might change, but the hope is that we're going to be bringing uh, the ancient, scholar, ancient philosopher and ethicist uh, at Harvard, Danielle Allen. The hope is that she's going to come here and speak if she's not able to come here in the spring, which I think is, is likely. Uh, but if she's not able to come in the spring, then that will become a virtual event. Uh, and so, yeah, we will have, um, she will be our keynote speaker of the year. Uh, at that time. And in preparation to that, assuming we are online in the spring, which I'm, I'm, is my guess, uh, there will be a series of events uh, developed uh, virtually that students can participate in in preparation for Danielle Allen's speech so that they can engage with her uh, more fruitfully. 
And I'll just add uh, the PPI events, um, the Public Policy Institute. Um, the events in the fall are October 5th, 6th, and 8th during the week. And those will be Zoom events. And then on the 9th and 10th is the drive-in movie at the Bundy campus. And so we we'll really want to encourage you to be involved. Thank you so much. Um, the only question I have also for follow-up for the history internships, if you would recommend first-year students to participate. Um, I would recommend uh, maybe getting at least one history class under your belt. I think that would probably be really helpful. Um, all of our courses really do concentrate on, on uh, developing uh, you know, critical thinking skills, research skills of that nature before you might want to jump into something more like that. We are currently uh, trying to figure out how to restart the oral history uh, internship because obviously we can't really go physically to <laughs> to actually interview people uh, at this point. So, uh, but, you know, we are, we have partnerships with the Santa Monica History Museum and the UCLA uh, Oral History Center. So that's kind of how we operated the internship before uh, all of this. Um, so we're, we're kind of trying to feel that out right now. Um, so uh, in terms of, of, how long you should wait. Yeah, I, I probably would say about a class, at least a class, right, before you, you want to jump into that. But having said that, right now, uh, we don't have the actual internship program up and running because of, of the situation. Thank you so much. Um, this question is for philosophy. There are a lot of career overlaps between the three majors, but what skills does philosophy give students compared to the other majors? So I, I, in some ways, I think it's difficult to say what skills you get in philosophy that you wouldn't get in the other majors. We are definitely focused on developing your critical thinking, deep, deep reading and writing skills. Um, I, I think it, you know, surely art history and history are also focused on the skills, uh, but you will probably end up with uh, different texts in which you're learning about critical thinking and logic and the like, and you'll end up with probably a different uh, vocabulary that you use for um, argumentative analysis and argumentative, uh, argumentative analysis and uh, argumentative writing and the like. Um, so yeah, in philosophy, you will definitely spend a lot of time thinking about um, the nature of concepts, how you go about defining concepts. You'll spend time thinking about the nature of argumentation. You'll learn about different kinds of arguments. You'll learn about different ways to evaluate those arguments. You spend a lot of time thinking about presuppositions to various ideas uh, put forth. Um, and I think you also spend a fair amount of time, maybe, and this might maybe differentiate uh, philosophy from history and art history, I think you spend a lot of time in philosophy thinking critically about norms. Um, so what makes something good? What are the uh, sort of rules that should structure a practice? What are the uh, overarching ethical values that we might use for evaluating those rules? I think that kind of a uh, normative reflection is um, a core part of uh, philosophical uh, inquiry. Um, and I'm not always so sure if that's as stressed as much in uh, the more historical approaches. But I'll let the historians uh, speak to that. I would just add, um, philosophy deals with the big questions. What is reality? How do we know it? And how should we live? And I think um, the concrete um, practice, if you, if you think about how things have actually played out, history is going to be more focused on what has actually happened than the more speculative and conceptual questions, which are more about how we ought to live. And, and, and that's what I think Paul's talking about when he says it's more normative. And no, that's exactly right. Like, what have we done? What have we been doing? The historians can give us a lot of really important answers. How should we go forward? What values should guide us? You notice I'm using that word should a lot. I think philosophy is often focused on those normative, those normative that question, those normative parts of things. 
maybe art history is in the middle because that's like <laughs> what what becomes an art object really becomes that philosophical question of like um you know what what were the determinants and actually art history is upending that by saying okay well, it's not just leonardo what else was happening with regards to visual production in the renaissance that wasn't given this category of genius which was a particular philosophical construct and so understanding that even the value judgments of what we look at traditionally have been determined so i, I was interesting i like the way you described that paul like the underlining assumptions and so there's this there's this sense of you have to know what is art and that becomes a topic from the no matter what course you take in art history, that's a category and the definition of that category then determines the types of objects and how you look at those objects. So we try to look at that from a lot of perspectives as well. So there's a lot of overlap, there really is between these three disciplines. It's great to be in a panel with and have them together. And if you, whatever, whatever you're majoring in, like to make sure you take a class in the other majors because you know having that philosophical background and that really grounding in history will benefit you and, and art history will benefit you regardless, it'd be amazing. I, w I would say that the, that they're very complementary. Um, I I am always telling students that you know that history can't really tell us about the future. I mean, if you if we study the past, you can't predict the future based on the past. So I always say that what history does is prepare you to ask the right questions, and I think that's where philosophy would kind of take over, right? So here here's what happened in the past. Think about how things have happened and then that should prepare you to start thinking about what are the questions we should be asking right now? What should we be grappling with as we move forward and what lessons can we learn from the past then to help us frame those questions, right? Um, and, and so uh, I think they are very much complementary, all, all, all three of our areas. And just to kind of um, piggyback on all that, I would definitely agree with everybody. Um, in Western Civ, we cover a lot of philosophy. Um, especially if you're taking Western Civ I, Ancient II, about the end of the Renaissance. Because um, we look at a lot of philosophy in terms of context, what was going on, what questions were people trying to answer about society, um, such as in Greece um, and Rome, looking, we look at Plato, we look at Aristotle. Later on, you know, we look at the humanists and the scholastics, going back, you know, going back to the ancient times, we look at the Stoics. Um, and everything like that and just kind of seeing what a lot of questions that they're trying to answer and you can apply a lot of these skills in any of these departments really so yeah i would agree it's really really complementary and you know we're, we're looking at very similar things but i think we're all asking questions just in very in in different ways but that's still you know complement everything really thank you i think the answer to the next question is yes or no because i know we're going to wrap up in about 60 seconds and the question is, is the history essay contest also being temporarily paused? No, <laughs> that is not. Uh, and we are very happy about that. Um, we do not know exactly the specifics uh, because the funding comes in from, you know, uh, it, it was an endowment. So we don't know exactly what the numbers are. Um, so, you know, it'll be somewhere in that 500 to 1,000 range. We typically give out three prizes every year. Uh, last year, we did give out uh, 1,750 and 500 dollar prizes. Those were the amounts. Um, I am not. I don't know what it's going to look like right now, but it'll be somewhere in that range. Um, but it'll probably. I'm thinking. I mean, we were kind of told it wasn't going to be as much, uh, but we'll we'll see. Uh, we're waiting on on the foundation, the SMC Foundation, to give us the details uh, before we start announcing that. Um, but you'll uh, students will have to actually uh, uh, submit their their scholarship application, and I believe this year they said they were going to push that back. It's usually December, um, and so that initial application has to go in first, uh, and then you'll be contacted if you're eligible by the history department. Uh, we will have workshops uh, to, to, for students who are interested in, in actually writing the essay. If you're eligible, you'll get a notification. If you're not eligible, you'll receive notification and uh, you know, be told exactly why, what you know, eligibility requirement wasn't met. Uh, and then you'll have a period of, of at least a month to actually work on the essay. Uh, students are welcome to take essays from courses, history courses, or even other courses or other classes they've taken, as long as they're history-based. Uh, and topics uh, can be anything in history. 
Uh, so you could do contemporary history, you could do cultural history, you could do uh, really anything that you can imagine. Uh, and then students will turn in, it's a four to six page paper. And, and then uh, there's a committee, the committee reads through them. Um, it's all, right, all the names are right <laughs> blacked out for, right? <laughs> obviously. So, so all of that uh, goes through and then the committee selects three. And, and uh, that is usually done in about April, so. I have no more questions for you. Thank you so much. Yay, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you to all of our participants for joining us today and especially for our faculty um, to be here on a Friday, uh, spending time with us, informing all of you. So uh, have a wonderful rest of the day, all of you students. We are so happy to have you. And once again, thank you so much to our faculty for joining us today. Have a beautiful rest of the day, everybody. Welcome to SMC, we're so glad you're here. Okay.